Okay, so where are we? We are in Venice. Yeah. We just got off the train that we took over the aqueduct. Very exciting. Looks like there's a bunch of cruise ships in port, so probably means there's going to be a lot of people here, but I'm excited. <laughs> As we all are. staying up here in Hotel Lisbona and it's pretty amazing. We hear this just about every time one of these comes around. Our hotel room like we're staying at that fancy hotel, but we don't have to. We don't have to spend all that money. So here it is, the hotel. We're kind of tired right now. We just plopped on the bed. And it's a very small room. Very high ceilings, but uh, you've got, how do you know how to turn it on? It's like staying in a park model. Very tiny shower, but we have one. And we have a toilet. Don't have them today, and usually they fit them in the tiniest places around here. But so far, so good. This is Hotel Lisbon. First night in Venice. So, what do you think of this so far? This is pretty impressive. There's many less pigeons than I expected. No, no, thank you. <laughs> So, but yes. But many more selfie sticks than I remember from last time <laughs> being sold on the streets. I am not a selfie guy as much, but I have been known to take a few of myself here so far. But my arm is fine. That is the Piazza de San Marco, or St. Mark's Basilica. And I can't remember what this tower is, but I uh, remember going in here, I think it was 14 years ago, on a Contiki tour, and it was amazing. And over here is basically the Palazzo, I think, I don't know. It all weaves together, but down past, behind the tower is the uh, Doge's Palace, which is really cool. But again, way less pigeons than I remember last time from last time anyway and uh, yeah the Euro's cheaper so win okay so we're on the other side and uh, this is the Doge's Palace Kind of the grand entrance to Venice. What I thought was just incredible, and I've never seen a cruise ship from far away before. But look at how freaking gigantic they are! I mean, that thing piece of work. So we've 
we've sat down at La Vena and behind me is our band. How romantic is that? So, here we are again. <laughs> St. Mark's Basilica is right there. We just enjoyed a lovely early dinner. So we'll have my wine over here, a little Chianti. This band, I tell you, is fantastic. They've been serenading us all night. Well, what little of it that we have yet experienced here in Venice. Our first night here. So, watching the sunset up at the St. Mark's Basilica was fantastic. We're going to be going there tomorrow inside and then possibly to Verano. And then the night after that, we have our theater experience. It'll be fantastical! <laughs> and the, uh, the waiters get into it too. talking about uh, these lights in the Piazza di San Marco at night are phenomenal. And uh, I do remember this from 14 years ago when I was here last. And it's something breath breathtaking. from our hotel room. <laughs> so we're listening to Ice Cube in our hotel room. Hotel Lisbona in good old Venice. It's a small little place, small little hotel. It's probably the smallest hotel room we've ever been in. As Don would say, it's this big. Anyway, the uh, walls are made of this kind of like... They're covered in fabric. Fabric. We do though have a little tiny um, uh, refrigerator down there. That's kind of nice, but, and oh, and the, uh, the bathroom is the tiniest we've ever used. But, it's cute, it's homely. We did get free breakfast this morning, but the coolest part is out here. Oh yeah, look at that shoe shiner thing right here. You can just activate it if you want. Woo! Your grandpa had one? I don't know if it shuts off on its own or not. I think it does. I hope it does. There we go. They gave me this thing and they're supposed to keep the key down there with them. Which is good because if I drop this in a canal, it ain't never coming back. where we had breakfast. Pretty fantastic. It was much more elaborate earlier, obviously. Now they just have cereal for the really late risers. So we're basically right underneath where we were. 
Traffic jam almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Thank you. Oh, I need my uh, passport. <laughs> Let me go get it real quick. Okay. We just got a very, very good uh, tour guide information session from our hotel concierge named Cristiano. He was very helpful in telling us what to do where to go and uh, kind of laid out the area of Venice from the tourist spots to the I guess non-tourist spots where people of Venice actually live have their kids and you know, go to the, uh, the schools and whatnot there's a hospital on this island as well as a um, uh, university even. So, of course, most of the tourists kind of converge on one area and we're in it. So, something interesting of note. So, we're on our way to the Doge's Palace or St. Mark's. We're both next to each other. We had dinner next to it, right in front of it, pretty much, last night. And, uh, it was fantastic. Chanel, Cartier, or as we heard one woman call it Cartier. I think she was from America. Sarah hates on me for hating on her own people. <laughs> but it's okay, I can be uh, as prejudiced against Americans if I want to be. And here is the St. Mark's Square. Where we were yesterday and it's beautiful every time of day and night. They turn on the lights uh, at night, which is a sight to behold in and of itself. We were here and we ate actually down that way, uh, outside and uh, watched the sunset on St. Mark's Basilica that you see in front of you. And uh, we were able to witness the lights turning on out here all along the square. Much akin to the plaza lighting, but they do it every day here. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Get those pigeons. You get those pigeons. They let you get pretty close. I haven't touched one yet, but again, when I was here in 2002, there was this one woman that we were with that they just swarmed her. And she even said they peck at your teeth and all that. Ooh, that's a little much. Yeah, we'll go through the gauntlet. I don't know what all this is. I think these are a lot of tour groups. Walkways that they set up. Yeah. It floods. I think so. Yeah, so every so often this area floods. Um, just because of its proximity to the water. And when that happens, they, they set up these walkways that you can see deconstructed right here. So, I'm glad it's not flooding, obviously, while we're here. And I'm not really quite sure what time of year it floods on average. So Rick Steves would be proud of us. In the corner between the Doge's Palace and St. Mark's, there's this very old uh, statue from, I believe, the Byzantine Empire. And uh, he kept talking about it in his whole, I don't know, spiel of Venice.
Okay, so apparently we got a lot more than we expected. However, there, uh, there's the Doge Palace, there's the Procosa de Visita, and then there's the Opera Museum. We are going down the Precursor to visit it first, and actually the Doge Palace is ahead of us. So, this is what I was not able to go into before. So, we're not quite in the Doge's Palace yet, but we have gotten what, I, what it looks like exclusive access. It's really not, but uh, lines outside are very intimidating to think that it would take forever to get in here, but it did not, so <laughs> score for us. The two statues up here, one on the left is of Mars, or Ares, depending on which uh, uh, belief system you believe in, Greek or Roman. And then the one on the right is Neptune. And they both were built in the 1600s. Up this grand staircase. So we think this is St. Peter slaying the dragon. Not entirely sure. But uh, it's pretty badass to me. No, St. Theodore. 14th century, the statue depicts St. Theodore of Amasia Tadario, one of the most venerated saints by martyr soldiers in the East and patron saint of Venice before St. Mark in the 13th century. It was originally at the top of the right column in the Piazza of St. Mark's, next to the column of St. Mark's Lion. It is a 14th century sculpture with an ancient armored bust and a young man's head of different origins. This addition resulted in the ancient mock of classical style according to the tradition. The saint's face is a portrait of Mithridates of Pontus. The crocodile-like dragon at his feet has the same iconographic characteristic as St. George. There we go. The cult of which is linked to the protection of marshes and healthy air. I just remember that wooden statue of St. George that scared the crap out of me when I was little. This one's a little bit more triumphant, I would say. Ah, there we go. I think these are called cloisters. And it makes it even more fitting because of the bells that we're hearing. Lots of bells here. We are up on the lo loggia the second floor, and this is where they had a lot of the seat of power, uh, all the governmental offices that would govern the city, that's from right here, these different rooms. Greeted by the main council. 
And this is why they waited. <laughs> like these clocks uh -huh. they have on the wall. With swords pointing to the time. So this is the Council of Ten, which was Mendoza's um, personal, personally selected council members. It was set up in 1310 and uh, took over various uh, temporary positions, from what I can gather. Again, another chamber of the room throughout the area. There are secret rooms back there. You can kind of see some uh, hinges on those doors, I think. I think somebody opened up a door that uh, led to one of those earlier. This is the armory. Weapons, more weapons. A horse helmet. I didn't like wearing that too much. What if these are rapiers? <laughs> Pretty cool. You are now entering the armor again. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me. A very sting punk. So this was one of the paintings main chamber that was damaged in the fire of 1577. And this was originally painted in 1385 and it's detached because they had to, I guess, restore it the best way they could and they moved it into this room. <coughs> that must signify the fire that happened mm -hmm. in 1578. 77. So this is the chamber of the Great Council. This is where they elected a new doge. And as you can see, it's the largest room that we've seen so far. In fact, in Europe, it was the largest room constructed without any supporting pillars or columns. And it's easy to see why. And right down there is the, where the doge sat. But all along the corners are the 70 some odd doges that have reigned since. And what you'll find is all of them have been very, held in very high esteem, except for one. And they explain this in the, uh, and the audiology, but up there, you can see it very well. It's a black cloth, and that was a doge that tried to attempt a coup d'etat in 1355, I believe. And on that black cloth is an inscription that says, "Here lies Doge Falero, I think, Falezzo, Falero." But uh, it says that he was decapitated for his crimes. <laughs> And they basically chopped his head off uh, down at the uh, main square in the Doge's palace in front of a grand audience. So they still gave him some respect in that they gave him a little slot up there. But uh, 
that's what happens when I guess you do a coup d'etat in the 1300s in Venice. Okay, we're about to go on the Bridge of Sighs. They created this in 1614, and it's basically a prison cell that was created to, I guess, create more space for the prisoners. And um, Casanova is imprisoned here. And I know that um, Rick Steves talks about how ironic being in prison in some place like Venice is. And you can definitely see why. Hmm. Unbelievable. Imagine languishing in here. I believe they said Casanova escaped. However, looks like there's some graffiti from the prisoners at some point. It also said in the audiology that some of the wealthier prisoners had better living accommodations. Especially if they could pay for their own meals while they're in prison. So this is a different route we're taking, but we think it all connects. I'm not entirely sure. But I think this goes all the way down. And there are a lot of prison cells here. What the, uh, the manuscript said was that this was the first major prison built. What they think it is the first major prison of this scale built in continental Europe. Let me out. I'm innocent. A lot of these, there are ten guys. The Council of Ten. So, we're where are we right now? On the Rialto Bridge. Yes. Where we almost got engaged. <laughs> yeah, and I'm so, so glad that didn't happen because... Hey, 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 hey. Let's put that in context Well, here. <laughs> I'm so glad that getting engaged up here didn't happen because it did happen. <laughs> Sorry, that is a different context. But, anyway, yeah, this, uh, it's totally crowded with people and uh, yeah, it would not have been as nearly as romantic. So we're just coming down the Rialto Bridge, all the way up there and all the way back is uh, where the bridge spans. It's a very broad one. Oh, there's an Italian penis. And there's an Italian penis. Get it. Like you do. glimpse of everydayness. My mom would like these, I think. Yeah, that's cool. I don't know if I get it home without it shattering. <laughs> well, a lot of these places actually ship for you, but I'm sure it is at a cost. Thank <laughs> you. 
Get it all. Yes. All get right. It all set. Perfect. Ciao. Thank you, Cristiano. Bye bye. Oh, there's a hotel Scandinavia up there. This is Formosa Square or Park or whatever you want to call it. Campo Santa Maria Formosa. We're on our way to the northern part of the island so that we can escape and go to Verano. And there's even some fresh produce here. We're on the northern, soon to be the northern part of Venice. And it just continues to be awesome, as you can see. We're in some sort of square here. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so apparently these are ambulances because <laughs> we're right next to a hospital. How clever is that? Wow, looky there. <laughs> yeah, so, so they do. So down there, we're on the back side of the hospital. And uh, that's where the ambulances pull in. I guess the, uh, to the emergency room. We're on the northern part of the island. So we just got on the ferry to go, well, it's not really a ferry, it's a water taxi from Venice to Burano. So. People are a little pushy. They're a little pushy. Well, it's funny too, because we got on this water taxi using the entrance you're supposed to use, but there were more people on the exit entrance. So they were not really allowing the people to get off so easily, but I guess they don't care. So, we're on the ferry, but not ferry, water taxi. We gotta remember that. And we took off, this is Venice, shaped like a fish in my opinion. And we passed by Murano. We're going, we're out to sea. You can see the airport up there. Just like, you can see it on the map here. It's going, Burano, that's where we're going. It's a much smaller island than Murano, which is that. We're going to this one. So we'll see how that goes. So here we are, Burano. This is the island that makes lace. Mm -hmm. Murano does the glass. And looky there, there's oh some lace. Oh yes. Oh yes. Even here they've got little canals. It's very colorful. We were just talking about how all of Burano looks like a puzzle, basically, because of all these colors, all these boats, all the lace, the water, you name it. Very picturesque. Yeah, what These glass candy? <laughs> they are. Huh? Just don't eat it. Oh yeah? Look 
Look at all Huge. these colors. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Are you gonna go? Hello. Hi, hi. Are you looking at a butterfly? Hmm? Hmm? It's a part of, is it part of a, what is it part of? Yeah, no, it's no, it is a scar. Oh, I thought it was part of this dress. What do I know? Oh, wow. Real glass, eh? Wow. How much? Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. This is the Isle of Lace. Many, many different kinds. All custom made pretty much by hand in Italy. I can't even imagine how much some of this costs and how long it took to make. But it is amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> Kate would be freaking out. Yeah. you been all my life. Oh, you've always been here. Indeed. So Daniel was telling us about this restaurant up at the top. We've now come across it, but only too late because we have to leave to go to an opera. But how cute is that? No one's up there. I don't even know if they're open, really, but... Vivarosa Ristorante. It's just... Oh, you know, is it you recording? Are, yeah, it's recording. <laughs> but, not for much longer. We're heading back to Venice now. We had a very successful shopping trip on uh, Verano. And uh, I think we got Christmas covered. Yay!